the excitement that they were working on a historical object. Uh, this capsule was actually utilized by NASA uh, back in the mid and uh, early 1960s uh, for training for Air Force and Navy personnel that were going to be recovering the spacecraft from the ocean. So the Apollo spacecraft lands in the water and then they recovered it with ships. And so the Air Force and Navy folks out of Patrick Air Force Base had to train before they actually worked with the real capsule. So they built boiler plates, which are essentially a capsule that is the same shape weight, etc., but isn't a real capsule and can be utilized for training. Now, it was brought to us under what's called a restoration loan, which means that we bring it here and then we restore it back to essentially an original condition. We are very lucky that we have uh, Mesa Verde here in uh, Alamogordo, and they very kindly donated men and machinery and time to move a 9,000 pound capsule uh, using a huge crane, putting it onto the flatbed and then strapping it in place. We then formed a convoy and we went down to Holloman Air Force Base with cars doing the same thing as it probably did when it was moving up from Florida. People were stopping, taking pictures. We could see people racing ahead of us. But we finally did get it over to the base. It was put in front of the metal shop, they were not able to get it inside. So they had to put it up on uh, sandbags that had been set up and mats, and they laid it on its side. And by laying it on its side, they were able to see the entire bottom that had to be more or less treated with the rust inhibitor. We've always had a lot of collaboration with Holloman, but we've always wanted to work with them on some of our restoration jobs. And this was our first real opportunity because they had a need for training for some of the guys in the metal shops and in the paint shops and, and th places like that. And we had an object that needed to be you know, restored and those skills were necessary to restore it. So this was really a natural fit. So that's why we ended up uh, turning the capsule over to the folks out there uh, to, to get restored. The favorite part for me was also, there was kind of uh, challenging, which was getting the guys to understand the importance of their roles in fixing it, in restoring that part of history, motivating them and challenging them to, to push their own limits to getting the job done within our time frame, but then also getting it done right and seeing how each one of them had their own strengths and weaknesses and how they learned not only from each other but what they were truly capable of doing. And then looking back and then seeing, they're looking at it like, I did that. I was on swings at the time and we were, uh, we were, we were putting in, you know, eight or nine hours a night on it, you know, just cause we were on a pretty tough deadline and it needed to be done. So it, it was pretty high priority. So if we weren't doing line jobs, stuff in the shop for aircraft. We were on it pretty steadily. The NASA space pod came on down. It was really in shambles and it was kind of messed up. Apparently it was on the, uh, the sand there for a while. Found a lot of garbage into it. So what we realized was when we got it down over here at our door and we placed it on the side that there was a massive amount of corrosion. Now this plate was about 3 eighths thick inch galvanized steel. And what we had to do was we had to cut it apart and try to fix it with whatever we had, which happened to be the same amount of plate and steel that we had, it was about 3 eighths. So we cut squares all around the section to get rid of the corrosion, and then we added the plates into it, we ground it down smooth, and now with the paint, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference underneath. We are going to get a very well restored boilerplate, and what has been exciting at the paint shop is that one coat of white paint, it was very thick white paint, they stripped it off. I had just gotten a call the day before from Tech Sergeant Fuentes, who's in charge of the paint shop, asking me, uh, what size is the lettering going to be and what type of stencil are we going to have to make? And the very next day, they had stripped down to it and there it was in perfect condition, the old NASA logo. I said, well, there it is, you don't have to worry about it. I spent uh, most of my time 
sanding off the white paint that was already on there, uh, making it look good, and getting it ready for top coat for the new colors. We removed the original paint that was on it. We prepped it for new paint, which included sanding. We masked it off the areas that we didn't want to get the overspray of the paint on. We revived this boiler plate to its original coating, and now it is on display for people to see at the Space Museum. I think it's an important part of history. Uh, it's nice to see that we're able to take something old like that and refurbish it for people to see what it looked like back when it was first made. One of the really neat things about this is that we have finally come full circle. When you think about it, the very first launch of the Apollo program did not take place at Cape Canaveral, which is in Florida, my home state. It didn't take place at, at Houston. It took place here. White Sands Missile Range with a Little Joe 2 rocket and an Apollo boiler plate on top of it. And guess what? You come to the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Guess what you're going to see? You're going to see a Little Joe 2 rocket with a boiler plate on top of it. And hopefully, you come into our memorial garden and there will be the restored boilerplate looking as it did when it was used for the tests and we are going to have a special plaque that's going to have the names of all the airmen who worked on that restoration project. Something that we are very proud to have. <laughs>